Hey everybody, it's Matt Shu from Upright Health, and I'm here today with my buddy Creepy Vincent. Hey. And today we're going to be talking about squatting. We're going to be talking about goblet squatting specifically. So, Vincent, what's the deal with goblet squats? Why should people be doing this stuff? Well, I feel like people should be learning goblet squats before they learn back squats or front squats with the bar because it just gets everything in alignment. And if you can't do a goblet squat properly, I wouldn't trust you to be able to do any other squat properly. He wouldn't trust you. So think about this. Um, we, we get a lot of people who are you know, just starting out, learning how to move better again. And then when they squat, what does it look like? It's something like... It's like... like that. Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, what? Okay. Yeah. A little bit of that. So you yeah. got to see his hip mobility there. <laughs> so what was wrong with what you just did? Well, uh, my knees caved in, my back rounded, my chest came forward way too much. All kinds of bad stuff. Yep, all kinds of so, bad stuff. So, uh, what's a simple fix for all this stuff? Uh, I find that uh, after teaching them a hinge and whatnot, just holding something in front of them, having them hold something in front of them as they squat, clears everything up nicely. Something like this? Yeah. yeah. All right, so. Here you go, 20 pounds. So this is the goblet squat. We've talked about this in the past before, but it really, really is that important. And so there's all kinds of theories about what this does uh, in terms of spinal extensor engagement, ab engagement. What kind of, what do you usually say to clients when you're explaining all this? Um, my explanation is that when you hold something in front of you like so and go to squat, it kind of forces stability in the spine and then it creates the necessary mobility in the hips and the knees to do a proper squat. Cool, and so this is actually something that we have, uh, we've actually discussed this at length. So sometimes, right, you were reading something that was saying like, oh, it's because abs are engaged when you do the goblet squat, right? And I've heard that too, where somebody will say, well, the goblet squat really turns on your abs and that's what makes uh, the goblet squat so useful. So this is actually for, uh, the people who are a little bit uh, more on the analytical side, maybe you're a trainer and you're wondering about that kind of stuff. We were debating this, like how do you even test that? How, how can we test if it's the abs that are responsible for the extra motion? And so if you're kind of like, ah, I want to test out that theory, one thing you can do is uh, use a band. And um, what we were talking about was basically having that band um, and as you're going down into your squat, you're basically turning this into a reverse goblet squat. And you're going to see what happens here as I do this. I'm getting increased ab engagement, but what you'll notice is that there's another problem that shows up when I get this increased ab engagement. Back starts rounding. Yeah. So it's a fun little experiment. You might want to try with a band, kind of change the vectors to kind of engage the abs in different ways. And you, what you'll see is that um, it's not just the abs, right? It's not just having the abs engaged. It's also about having the spinal muscles engaged, having these uh, hip extensors also engaged as a result of having that weight in front of you. Mm -hmm. So uh, goblet squats, again, super, super important for people to be messing around with. If you're trying to learn to squat deeper and deeper and deeper, throw a little bit of weight in front of you. Uh, programming recommendations. Uh, I'd say yeah, three sets of 10, just to warm up. Yep, with what weight for some people? Most um, people maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 10, 10 to 25 pounds is, should be enough. Cool. So give that a shot, everybody. Goblet squat. If you're a trainer and you're messing around with goblet squats and trying to understand what they're doing for people, give that little band thing a try and kind of see what it does to you and, and kind of start wrapping your head around what muscles are engaged when you do different movements. Um, and then always remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, share, and comment, and don't forget to subscribe.